Hey there, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And if you like videos like this, please click that like button. It really does help out the channel. And also, if this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing. I really like making videos about watches, and I hope you enjoy my videos. Uh, so there you go. Let's kick it off with some news uh, from the monochromewatches.com site. That's where I get most of my news. Thank you, Monochrome Watches. Seiko is introducing a new version of the Presage. Uh, we have a GMT Urushi lacquer dial, the SPB447. Urushi is pretty much Japanese, I believe, for lacquer. This is part of the craftsman, craftsmanship series that combines the traditional techniques. And then this watch in particular with the GMT function, it's combining the craftsmanship series has uh, produced the um, the likes of uh, enamel dials, the Arita porcelain, the Arushi lacquer, as you see here. And sometimes they've combined the guilloche with the enamel. Uh, so nice looking pieces here. Uh, for sure. Again, this is the SPB447. Some of the specs, we have a 40 millimeter case diameter, 12.4 millimeter height, and 48 millimeter lug to dub dual curve sapphire crystal, screwed case back features, a uh, see-through window, uh, so you could see the movement and the comfortable 100 meter water resistance. Uh, so nice little touch there, a little big, a little big for like a dress piece. Uh, I think the author of this view, um, article has you know lamented that maybe uh, it would have been nicer for a smaller uh size but anyway uh it is what it is uh this uh gmt hand is a, a like a gold tone gmt hand it looks like and the hands are coated with luma bright that our hand looking like a you know like a spade i would say and so this is a gmt hand and then you got the the circle on the, the counterbalance for the the seconds. Uh, nice looking piece. There is the movement, the six R fifty four A movement. It's a mid tier Seiko movement with seventy two hour power reserve plus or minus twenty five um, seconds, minus fifteen seconds. Uh, so a big berth uh, in in time difference there. However, what I would say is and and i think most people who i know who've, who've talked about the six R movement who've had experience it the the more you wear it uh the more accurate time uh, keeping it is if you if you have it sitting out for a while and then you uh do a time graph or measure it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit uh, wonky with with the with the timing so wear it and it'll keep good time that's the the story here um and yeah i mean you're looking at a euro of 1850 for this one again the 6r54 movement 20 000, 1600 beats per hour uh wait for a discount for sure uh you can probably get these at, at a discount eventually um or or second hand is a, is a great option moving along to industry news bulgari and six new independent brands joined the ranks of watches and wonders hey the more the merrier that's all that's what i always say uh but bulgari is joining let's see who else is joining besides bulgari Armstrong HYT will be back. Okay, so they'll be back. While Christian Van Vanderclaw, beautiful, beautiful watches by uh, Chris, uh, Christian Vanderclaw, uh, Genus and Cross Studio and Meister Singer, the uh, famous one-hander German watch uh, brand, uh, will be uh, taking part. Uh, altogether, 60 brands have confirmed for 2025. You get the likes from A Long and Zahn all the way to Zenith. Uh, great event great for the watch community when the when these uh, events happen because we do see if you can attend um obviously you do see all the uh new releases coming out uh, around that time and it's great great talking points especially if you're having if you have a channel that reports the news <laughs> okay moving on to Gerard Perigo. I'm a big fan of Gerard Perigo. I'm a big fan of Laureato. So I'm going to throw this in here. Uh, Japan, a, a hero uh, limited edition celebrating the 160th anniversary of commercial relations with Japan. GP introduces new additions to its Laureato. Uh, let's take a look here. You have a chrono with that blue dial and the dark blue sub dials. Now, Look, on in the renders, um, I'm not a big fan of this look. However, you know, I, I, I'll reserve judgment. I'll reserve judgment until I see this in person because I wasn't a big fan of the regular three-hander with the green dial. And then when I saw it in person at the um, uh, at a boutique in, in in Austria with my friend Wolfgang, I was 
Whew, man, it blew me away. It blew me away. So I'm going to reserve judgment. The blue dial version here, the three-hander, is kind of like the Sunray. Um, uh, is that probably like some sort of stamped guilloche? I, I don't know if even that's considered guilloche. Anyway, um, stamp, uh, Sunray effect here. It's okay. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I still would go with the classic blue Laureato, um, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's nice. Um, big fan. That's why I'm reporting on these watches. Anyway, let's take a look at price. The Corona will be around. Ah, oh, they have it in yen. Okay. Uh, so um, limited to 100 pieces, 2,805. 2, that I believe, yeah, that is for the chronograph. I don't know what that is in dollars or euro. But I'm sure uh, you can figure that out. Twenty thousand five hundred for the for the regular three hander. Okay, moving on. Finally, and Baltic, the micro brand sweetheart, is coming out with some stone dials in three various colors. Hey, look, you know, I've been I've been hard on Baltic for a while, and it's and it's no fault of their own. Uh, you know, a few years ago, let's let's get real here. A few a few years ago, um, Way, uh, Waco from Revolutionary Watch described the owner of Baltic as the uh, next superstar in watch design, and uh, and you know, for me, that was a huge stretch because basically, what Baltic was doing was borrowing designs from. Uh, paddock from Longines, from vintage Longines, vintage paddock, vintage paddock, vintage Omega, and there was nothing new or revolutionary or great about them. They were good-looking pieces for what they were, uh, fairly affordable for what they were, and you know a lot of people like them. And whatever, I mean, that's fine. That's fine if that's what you are. But my issue again, Waco, with that outrageous, outrageous. Uh, <laughs> Uh, comment, uh, outrageous, uh, you know, statement uh, saying that uh, it was he—he he was like the next great, one of the next great watch designers. It's all there in that article. You can look it up. Um, but anyway, I'd like to see that they're doing something a little bit different here with the dials. Um, it's a good direction uh, that they're opening, branching out, and doing stuff like this for sure. Um, there's nothing interesting about the design itself, except for the dials. You know, obviously are. You know, if you like that kind of stuff, you know, it looks, I mean, that looks, that looks good. I mean, that looks good. Uh, for me, uh, it was Baltic was just like, you know, I mean, it's like uh, any other brand that does vintage designs. Um, the, uh, I've had a couple Baltic watches in for review, sector dial. It just, it didn't feel substantial on, on wrist, right? Um, but anyway, I mean, it's reflected on the, on the price point. You can get affordable watches that look that look great so good on baltic doing something different doing something new here um and uh just just don't fall just don't don't fall trap for for industry uh quote unquote uh leaders um saying things like what waco says i mean he at the end of the day he's a businessman he's getting paid by these brands to say these things uh you're looking at 1250 to 1310 here uh depending on the strap in euro uh, 36 millimeter case diameter, 9.2 millimeter case thickness. Uh, you have the ETA PSU, PSU, PSU 7001 um, manual movement. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about these watches. Please put a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.